Okay. All right. All right, we're back. Um, I changed the setting. I found what the hell was going on. I'm very sorry about that, guys. I don't know how that setting even got changed, but my phone kept trying to go into auto lock every three minutes, and uh, so I had to turn that back off. I don't know if the phone reset itself or while I was gone. If it, I don't, I don't know what happened. But whatever, it's taken care of now. Uh, we're still here at uh, Honolulu well, Police Department. And uh, we have uh, several individuals that have uh, been handling, trying to retrieve all the video that's already been done, and are recording it, trying to get it on, on uh, YouTube right now. And uh, we have a few uh, media channels that it's definitely watching. Everybody's got it. coming up for like four minutes and then stopping. They're on there. Everybody else is watching them. Okay, so we got some chanting going on. Thank you.
OPDS. OCAM. CAM. OWS. Cyber 99. Uh, whatever you think is more effective. It doesn't matter. Do them on both. Just do the top of your face. Say what? Same. Yeah, we've been maintaining a pretty decent count of people on here. It keeps fluctuating, but we've been... Why is PDX? Oh... <laughs> awesome. Some support out there. That's a good thing. It's awesome. I gotta say, the grapes is freaking cool. <laughs> I haven't had grapes in so long. Oops. Hashtags. Andrew is now trying to uh, repeat what uh, Rise PDX sent out for different uh, links for Twitter. He's going to reiterate that to try and get some more attention. 
people know what's going on here. It's getting pretty late here. It's now uh, what, 11 p.m. I've been here for, God, what, seven, seven hours? Eight hours? I don't know, something like that. We got here at uh, about 3.30. All right. So we got uh, seven and a half hours. Yeah. Seven and a half hours of the stand inside HPD calling for <laughs> calling for uh, Trish Morikawa and Wesley Chung to be arrested for theft. Two cabinet members that's underneath uh, Mayor Carlisle for uh, blatantly breaking the laws that they uh, uh, created to attack the houseless and uh, occupy Honolulu. This be uh well, one more hour and we'll be on day 278. So yeah, two, day 277 of our encampment continuously. Yeah, see how hard at work. <laughs> A lot of typing for all those links. Hashtag HPD. Can you fit it? Getting the social media more, we were just giving a whole mess more links to try and get people to track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think you come on, follow me. <laughs> Can I break you to the camera? I don't think so. Uh, what's wrong, Daniel? What's wrong? <laughs> uncorrupted is not right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uncorrupted, yeah. uncorrupted <laughs> is not that they wouldn't just break laws, you know. 
people on power wearing gray gloves that are already made try to act like they can get away with that. Right. You know? I mean, at least... I guess that is where I, it just makes me so uncomfortable that I have to do something. It makes me really feel like I want, I'm willing to sacrifice a lot to make that stop. But I guess then the second problem then is I don't know how or what to sacrifice in order to, to make a difference. Like, I'm, well, not right sure, now, I'm not sure how I'm making them. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it though. Like, maybe you can sacrifice really hard and uh, you know just don't have any social life and just go to school real hard and then become a senator yourself or something. And don't be corrupted, you know. Like I don't know. That's why I'm conflicted. I'm not sure if I'm conflicted. Which is more effective. But then it's hard though, because I honestly am afraid that if I win the school for just even a few more years, I'm not even sure what it would be like when I came out. That's how bad it is. So right. that's why I, it's a serious, oh, I don't even, uh, you know, even think about doing this. Cause it, I went to school three years ago uh, because the economy crashed and I was working just a menial job and I figured, oh, okay, well, that's the incentive to go back to school because by the time I get my degree, everything will fix itself, the economy will be fixed, we'll, we'll get out of this recession, everything will be fine. Um, I attained my associate's degree a year ago in the middle of Occupy, and it's not fixed now. I only have another year, a little over a year left, um, of my bachelor's, and unless something drastic changes, and I'm fighting every day to make sure that something drastic changes, you know, I'm, I'm going to have $80,000 in debt with no career prospects. And because the government changed the rules for graduate level programs, I lost out on even being able to defer my loan for another couple of years and get a master's. I can't pay. Well, no, you go into a master's program, it, it's still deferred. No, it's not. You gotta pay while you're going in the through the master's? Yes, you have to pay the interest. What the hell? The six month deferment has also been taken away. Right. The month that you graduate is the month that you have to start paying on the loan. <laughs> and your, uh, you know, associates and bachelors. So it's like, you, you know, you get these people that say, you know, get a job or, you know, whatever, like, but they don't realize, like, people are employed. They're full-time students and still find time to do this. Why? On the hope that when they do finish college, that they have some kind of a job prospect or something's in place to help them out. And the 1% just doesn't care. The government's been bought and paid for. You can see it in the legislation that they write. You know, what are you supposed to do? So, I mean, I, I feel you, brother. I do. Because... You're, you're talking about the same thing is what pushed me to go into college. And now, you know, it's a crappy economy, and I'm going to be $80,000 poor with no way to pay it back because of so much damage that's been done to the economy and so much damage that's been done to the general population because of these policies that were put in place. And, you know, this isn't just a Bush thing. This is an Obama thing. As well, you know, here I was, like, just completely enamored with the Democratic Party and didn't think that they could do any wrong. And they've screwed me over worse than what Bush ever attempted to do. I mean, that, that should tell you something. When the party who is supposed to be standing up for the working class and who is supposed to be standing up for the poor and making sure that we have social programs that are funded and jobs and a, a decent standard of living when they abandon you as well, what does our political system come to? You? I mean, you might as well just put up an American flag with corporate logos on it. Because this is the United States of Exxon. This is the United States of McDonald's. You know, this is definitely the United States of Halliburton and Raytheon. What are citizens supposed to do other than this? 
the only thing that we have left is our voice. They've taken everything else away from us. They, they've taken away our options. They've made it almost impossible to own a home. They've made it almost impossible, if not for many people, impossible to, to rent, to even feed themselves. I moved out here on savings, thinking that, oh, within a month, you know, I'll be able to get a job. I've had a full-time job applying for jobs for three months now and haven't gotten anything. And I had an immaculate work record. What are we supposed to do? And because I'm a student, I don't even have access to food stamps. I don't have access to medical care. I don't have access to food. I don't have access to housing. I have access to nothing. What's the treasure going to be? Sure, you don't have access to housing. Yeah. If you have a house, they're going to steal it from you. So, so what do you do? I've done the only thing that I can do. I've pitched a tent in town of square. Because that's the only thing that I have left. And Trish and Wes are allowed to, to take even more away from a citizen. I mean, where do you draw the line? It's absolutely deplorable that there's even an Occupy movement. That people had to rise up and say this is wrong because it got so bad. That is a complete failure of the system to let things get so bad that you had to have a popular uprising. That's a failure. There's no reason for the Occupy movement if things would have been done correctly if the economy would have been fixed, if people's homes weren't being foreclosed on and being thrown out in the street, if student debt wasn't rising at an astronomical rate, if people weren't dying for lack of food and health care. That's why Occupy is here. Just try, try and stop that. And, you know, one day it'll be fixed. You know? So, but when? When are they going to get it? It's so easy. It's so easy. The 1% does nothing but bitch and moan about Occupy and, and about, you know, how they're dirty hippies or get a job or do this or, or do that. When the solution is fairly simple and they have the power to create the solution. Tax the rich. Audit the Fed. You know, repeal Citizens United. Reinstate Glass-Steagall. Make it a felony to accept corporate money. Let's get a public pool for... for and corporate uh, personhood. Yeah, and, and corporate personhood. Let's get a pool of money together for politicians to run on. And so that they get a set amount of money, you know? So you get a set amount of signatures that say that you're a viable candidate, and then this is the money that you have to spend. Even the playing field. Because the only people that get elected... It's the guy with the most money. And that's absolutely deplorable. That doesn't mean that the person with the most money is the most qualified. That just means that they, they lied, stole, and cheated their way to the top and now want to do it on a national level and affect so policy. Should we try to make money to get people to listen to us? Is that worthy? I mean, no. Is that, is that, no. Why not? How do you know? How do you know it's not the better strategy? Just work real hard and make because by money. doing that, you, then, you're then, saying then. that you agree with the, the way the system is. Well, what's wrong with the system? You just heard. That it, that it robs you to cheat and cheat other people out of stuff. You shouldn't have to. We, we live in the United States where your voice is supposed to matter. And that's what we're asking for is our voice to matter. Your vote is supposed to matter. And you cannot vote anymore responsibly. You can't. Because every time, you know, I just went and voted. You know what I'm voting against? I'm voting against thousands of dollars on a local level. had a level. person chime in saying, he's so right that the system has failed so badly. Okay, well, what I just voted against that? thousands of dollars worth of special interest. <laughs> That's all I voted against. How much is my vote worth, worth when compared, and, and on a national scale, you know, when you're talking about a presidential election, you're voting against billions of dollars. Billions. 
to elect somebody who, when they finally get elected, has a favor to return. You know? Who has a stock portfolio. Uh, just hit a new sign. I can't even read it with all this stuff on the screen. Russ Trisham West. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The guy on there totally looks like, uh, from Portland, by the way. Actually, the guy on there kind of has, if you, if you have his thumbstick up and a little hand come out on each one, looks like the guy that they got painted on the street right now in Anaheim in front of Disney. <laughs> you know, and we know what that's supposed to represent. Yeah. Mickey Mouse is hanging out with Blackwater in Anaheim. Oh, yeah, by the way, shout out to Anaheim. Guys are fucking badass. Uh, yeah, big two holes to the speech. Great work, man. Mad. That'd be from Rise PDX. Rise PDX has been like jumping in on this thing the whole entire time. You've been watching this. Appreciate it. And everybody who's watching this, you know. Michael Tata says, how many heroes holding up? <laughs> we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, right now. Like say what? People had to go get my surprise home to go upload a video of assault for mainstream media to utilize. Um, and uh, some people are over at the camp because we need to maintain the longest running encampment globally for Occupy. <laughs> Yeah, we have uh, several people that's working very hard to try and keep everything going for us. So it's not just the people here, it's everybody that's involved. But, but so are we doing... Sorry? Here. That's what I was thinking. Why not? I, I would think so. Also, like, why does it matter if you've been there for the longest? Is that kind of mission? It's like, you'd be like... How? Like, okay. <laughs> 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 so, I think it's like, just... It's like, it's like, oh, we want to be famous or something? Like, no, it, it, it represents our struggle, and it, and it represents everything that everyone has had to go through. You know, I'm, I'm new to this occupation. I came from Chicago, so mad props to everybody who has been here from, you know, November to April and continue to be here after I got here. You know, that, that's something to be proud of, that so many people under such incredibly oppressive conditions have been able to stick it out. So you're damn right. That's something to be absolutely proud about. Because that's, that's a representation of many people's character. And, and, and how willing they are to, to go the extra mile and to do the right thing. And, you know, that was, that was one of the big disappointments in Chicago. OWS Maui, Maui, solidarity from OWS Maui. Right they on. just chimed in. Right on. <laughs> but, you know, that was, that was a big di disappointment in Chicago. It, 300 arrests in Grant Park to try and hold on to a camp that we, we, we never were able to do. And... But that didn't mean that we gave up. We just shifted focus, you know, and, and Chicago was, was extremely effective with, without a camp. But, I mean, this is a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty to, to walk down the street and see an Occupy camp and to see Tensa in, in solidarity with our brothers and sisters around the world. 277 days. Yeah. <laughs> so, 277 days is, is quite the So that's that's an amazing thing. So yeah, it does it. I mean, does it matter in the large scheme of things? Even if the camp did come down, it wouldn't change anything. We would still be effective. We would still be fighting. But damn, is it nice to be able to walk into an occupied camp, what? into a community? Is it, is it really? Is it the most effective way to, to bring people's attention to the issues? It's a 24/7 in your face. The, the oh, style of Occupy encampment has a long history through through many, many movements. I keep hearing you question, is this the most effective, is this the most effective? Well, 
yeah, right now it's had significant change in, in public discourse and, and what people talk about. Um, and that's the first stage of anything like this. You know, back after World War One, you know, when they decided that the budget was screwed up and so they weren't going to pay military personnel, they went and camped out in front of the White House. And they got the GI Bill out of it. So there's a long history to this style of protest. It's not just because, oh, having tents sounds fine, or, hey, this is a way where we can, like, torture ourselves 24 hours a day. You know, it is a way to truly uh, be connected to something that's historical that is about a solid representation that there is, you know, corruption and lives being destroyed every second of every day, and this is how we represent that. So, I do think that it's extremely powerful. Otherwise, they wouldn't have worked so hard and beat so many people and pepper sprayed so many people and shot so many people in order to destroy them. I agree like, too that it's like a huge uh, discussion opener, I guess, um, just in the fact that in Occupy Honolulu, the Occupy camp is called, recently called an eyesore, and it's like, okay, good, now we can talk, like, so you're going to call, um, you know, people's last ditch effort at survival an eyesore. This is a great time to start, like, this discussion, <laughs> like, what, what does that exactly mean? And what does that imply about the system in which we live, that, that people can be so presumptuous as to call someone's very last-ditch effort to, to, to stay alive um, an eyesore? Uh, that, that holds some pretty heavy implications, and I think that, that getting people to a position where that is said is a great time to start talking, because that's the sort of thing that gets people to really reflect upon what they've just said and what that means about the society in which we live today and maybe how we can change that because, um, you know, that opens up the discussion of, like, why we're here tonight with, like, Trish and West. It's like, oh, well, you know, the, the helpless encampments are an eyesore, so we'll just, we'll just take their tents, you know, the full, um, yeah, the, like, that's a tent, yeah, that's, like, fabric purchased at a store, but that's, like, somebody's house, so, I mean, you you just, you just took their house away from them, which is, you know, not only is stealing illegal, um, and you did it not backed up by any kind of legislation, but, you know, you did it under, under the justification that it's ugly, that, well, yeah, it's ugly, fuck it, like, the, the society in which we live is ugly, you know, the way we treat people is ugly, we don't, we don't treat people with dignity, minimum wage is not livable. You know, there's no way that, that we are supposed to live off of, off of what we are given in the current society. It's like, damn right it's ugly, and so we need to, we need to work to change that. Trixie, uh, 79, she has put on here, the fraud of the elections need to be exposed so badly. Rise, I wish more understood this. What she's oh basically God. saying... Let's talk about how bad the elections are here locally. Okay, so... I am working uh, with a union, and I'm working right now on campaigns. I'm not going to get into who or what or whatever, because quite frankly, I'm selling my soul I admit it. Um, <laughs> and I'm not here to represent them right now. However, um, we had a huge, I mean a huge percentage of absentee ballot uh, requests that we have personally gone and handed into City Hall somehow disappear. Um, and so people are not getting their absentee ballots um, like it's supposed to. Uh, there are people on the voter registration rules that are duplicate, so people are getting multiple ballots. There are people that um, are getting absentee ballots when they never signed up for them. So they have the ability to not only vote absentee, but to go in person and vote, um, because they'll be showing up on those voter rolls there too. Um, there's people that are getting, uh, we just had a bunch of, and I mean massive redistricting, uh, because of census. And so there are people that are getting, uh, ballots sent to their home at their registration address in the correct district, and then people that are getting one sent to their P.O. boxes, um, 
as that being their registration address, so they're getting two different districts for ballots for multiple districts. Um, so there's already huge amounts of election fraud issues uh, because of how screwed up and antiquated everything is here. Um, and the thing is that we have a better system than some. Um, you know, we have you know a system that's worse than a lot, but not all. Um, but I mean, it, it's significantly screwed up. So here we are on elections, and this is primary, but it's set up so that if any candidate who's running in the primary gets 50% plus one, then they automatically win the election, and they don't have to go to the general election. So the primary ballots are way, way screwed up. But yet we're supposed to accept that none of this is on purpose. You have a bunch of, you know, union workers turning in absentee requests and they're not getting processed at such a high rate. Oh yeah, no, that's not at all biased and deliberate and full of shit. So yeah, no, there's there's mass corruption within the, the election system here locally. Well yeah, I mean, speaking of the ballots, um, mine still hasn't been sent, you know. We had to call three times just to verify that I was even registered to vote. You know, and here the election, the, the last day to turn in the ballot is on Saturday. You know, today's Wednesday, so we only have a few days left, and I still haven't received a ballot. Now, luckily, I caught it in time, and I am registered to vote. So rather than being able to vote, um, after we can, like unlike most districts that I've been in, like out here, if your district is small, my district is only consists of 500 people, um, which wasn't big enough for them to open a polling place. So everybody has to vote absentee in my district. So I ended up finally having to go down to City Hall and voting in person there rather than do it the way that it was originally intended, which was to mail me out a ballot, to to vote in the primary and then, you know, mail it back or whatever. They, and, and I mean, you know, you, you want to talk about selling out to corporations? This isn't even run by any, uh, this, is, this is run by a private corporation that was given over uh, voting control. You know, there's no public oversight. There's no, they, they screwed it up so, so terribly and I, and I honestly don't think that they care that it's been screwed up so bad, and so there's no recourse. So we're going to have thousands of people on this island who probably wanted to vote, but couldn't. You know, that's, that's absolutely appalling. It's absolutely appalling. And a lot of it's due to the, the way they don't have around. nearly enough staff to process everything correctly. They don't have enough staff to deal with all the research. We are totally, completely unprepared in order to deal with the election uh, in a proper and legal, ethical, you know, manner. And yet they choose to do things like spend like three quarters of a million dollars. Um, I'm sorry, every, every time somebody's walking by and throwing up the sun. Um, three quarters of a million dollars to harass protesters and houseless people, I would rather have seen that money go into proper elections, not that I'm all about elections, but if we're going to work that system, then put resources where it needs to be in order for it to be proper. But again, they don't want the system to run proper. They want to be able to manipulate it and fuck it up. So, and then blame just the people that are working their asses off, overworking, you know, doing 12-hour shifts in order to try to process all this crap that they're underprepared and, un, you know, unstaffed to do. Resources. It's about resources. And the wars tax the rich, provide services and infrastructure and things that people need. You know, stop. Yeah. Ah! Mm -hmm. Ah! <laughs> it's, it's awfully late here, and 
called the Pineapple Glitch Gang of Heroes with Hearts of Pure Gold from <laughs> Rise PDX. <laughs> Revolution Nova, thank you for streaming this amazing to see such truth spoken. <laughs> you guys are the shit. Thanks for watching. Yeah, you guys are being a part of it. I know, some of you have been on this live stream as long as we've been sitting here at, at HPD. So. Been bored at an amusement <laughs> track, right? So <laughs> yeah. I hope you guys ate pizza when we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, they ordered a pizza. Uh, that's, that's the other thing. You know, under these incredibly oppressive conditions that the government has created for us, I mean, look at what we have. We have pizza donations. We have people dropping off soda mm -hmm. and water. You know, <laughs> you know, just just because the government screwed and bought off doesn't mean that there's still anything good in this world. It would be good to have some betting donations. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the coolest thing. Pillows, cheap air mattresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those motherfuckers stole two of mine today. Yeah, they got two air mattresses from there. Dude. And I've got yeah. physical issues, so sleeping on the concrete is a bad, bad help. I know when they were dealing with, uh, who's, who's was that real big one that was, uh, Terry's, wasn't it? Terry's, yeah. yeah oh they my god. It. It, no, they didn't. What, today? Yeah. Oh. They didn't pop it. They did that one time. Really? Yeah. yeah. The last time they cleared the camp out, they got it. No, this time they actually aired it down. They took their time and aired it down, but it took two of them to try and get it because this thing was so huge. <laughs> <laughs> it was like as big as a king-size waterbed sitting in there. It was like, what the heck? I didn't even know that was in there. I had one of those two and had as big as this size. It's really big. Yeah. And so I, I bought like one. They saved, right. they saved my freaking, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the king uh, file? My, my, my lounge chair, right? You know, I'm like, oh my god, I love that chair because it's, it, you know, because I have to sleep during the day, so I get that few hours of heat before I finally wake up, but that allows circulation, so I'm not waking up in a pool of, you know, disgusting, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's great. I'm loving it, right? You know, so I'm like, hell yeah, and I saw them take their time and actually put it in there. I was like, wow, fuck yeah, man. I thought for sure they were going to throw that thing out. There is still tape up to the phone. Um, after the announcer and the we uh, sat around for about two hours or so, just kind of debriefing what we'll do next, you know. Uh, which, um, you know, things of that nature, and then, once that was done, I was like, the hell with this shit, I'm going to HPD, and I'm going to sit down in the middle of their metal detector, and uh, block it off, so. You are so Chicago. Point of affection. They're uh, Damien's like, well, get some rust on that chair, and I'm like, yeah, they already got it, though, but at least they didn't throw it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't forget Andy's wild ambulance. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Assault and ambulances. Assault and ambulance. Yeah, I leave it to Andy. Ambulance. Well, ambulance. You know how hard is it? it is for the medic to not be around when the police fucking bring down violence on protesters. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was there. Your people were fly louder than you. As far as I can tell, I am as screwed up before the incident as I am afterwards. They didn't knock but anything like in. They didn't knock any sense into me. <laughs> I, nothing that would change me from doing this if that was their intent. <laughs> oh no, please balance I'm going home. <laughs> Guess I'll go home. Good point, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, good on you. You shoved me into a metal detector. Touche. Guess open. I'll go home now. Yeah, not gonna happen. Yeah, I didn't believe you before. 
it is the most ridiculous thing of all of this, right? So their response to theft and allowing theft to take place is to use violence. At what point are they going to learn that we're not intimidated? They're not dealing with people who will back down. We're not people. So these these actions, like the violence that took place, What's or, the the tent monster? The you need a tent or the theft, you know, all that does to people is steal their reserve to continue to fight. So every time they pull this kind of stunt, that just makes me want to stay even more. So, here's a little hint to law enforcement. If you want people to go away, stop giving them reasons to stay. <laughs> Trish Morikawa and Wesley Chun, they are cabinet members that were appointed by uh, Peter Carlisle, who stole from us today, and we are not leaving until they are put in... You guys in were the front that one time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we were all there. there. We got to yep. again. I was going to say, I guess somebody gave you guys permission to be up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been sitting here for about eight hours now. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully they arrest Christian and Wes. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not doing anything right now... Yeah, if you're not doing anything, we can tell you where they live. Yeah, Church Moore, Church Moore, and Wesley, Wesley Chun. Chun. The head of the, and, the, and uh, yeah. Department of Housing. Yeah. And I would also ask you to ask the rest of your police officers on your shift not to assault any of us again. Yeah, I was a, I was assaulted by one of the officers today. So what did these people do? They they stole from us today. What? Yeah, what ended up happening was uh, we were tagged yesterday. Okay. Right under under ordinance eleven dash zero two nine, and so under the law you have twenty four hours to remove the items that were tagged, which we did. And in fact, Trish Morikawa and Sergeant Santos watched the items being removed, and yet DFM came in anyway and took the tents that were just put up and took all the property that was just put up, items that were not in that park for 24 hours. And when we confronted them about it during during the raid that was taking place, the officers refused to respond to us. Now afterwards, after they took down the uh, the crime scene tape, uh, myself and, uh, and my brother over here confronted uh, Sergeant Santos about it, who freely admits on camera that he watched us remove the items. So he... He saw it happen and knew full well that what was taking place was completely illegal and let it take place anyway. This is theft. Point, point blank. I've filed numerous police reports for the same type of behavior, uh, but this one is a little, this is the most clear cut case that we have. Have you guys ever gone to the commission? Yes, absolutely. I, I've spoken in front of the Yeah, several commission times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, myself personally, I spoke at the police commission and answered questions um, to the police commission. I was at Honolulu Holly and I uh, spoke with the corporate council. I and followed me. Major Sean Naoto? Yeah. I've gone all over, all over the state. We have, we have tried absolutely every avenue to, uh, to get these criminals brought to justice. We don't have the money. Legal legal aid is, is overbooked, ACLU is overbooked. I don't know what I'm saying that um, as far as civil attorneys. Yeah, we've been looking. Yeah. Oh we we've definitely been looking. we we've gone through and, and every avenue. I'm not here to hang yeah. anyone else that I work with that has done wrong. But there's always options. Well, like I said, like we said before, this isn't about uh, HPD. This it is, is to an extent. Like, it, I, it, I we're not against these. Should, you guys should be arresting these people because they're breaking right. the law. Right. They're, they're, they're no better than common criminals. Okay. Right. So, you know, um, there's been numerous police reports for, for other behavior oh, that's good, that, that, that Trish and Wax are Right. You know, and this is this is the final straw because when we when we have a sworn officer of the law that knows that we're in the sergeant. right, yeah, he's a sergeant. 
and knows with beyond a shadow of a doubt that those items are removed and then still allows DFM to commit a crime, that's criminal conspiracy. Yeah. Or is it that the problem, I can't, they can't prove that the bill is structured so you can't, they can't prove that those items that they're taking were there for hours. So the thing is, if they can't speak before anyone is there, right. Right. No, 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 no. I'm just listening to what you're telling me. Yeah. It's, it's also documented by, like, right. it, it would Absolutely. just be nice if, if the department followed through on it. They, they, they gave me the same runaround that they've given me before. I mean, in fact, I was specifically told that they have to go through a special procedure because these are high-level targets that we're asking to be arrested. You know, this, that's the third time that I've, I've heard that language. And if it wasn't done the first time and it wasn't done the second time, I, I have very little faith in the fact that it's going to be done the third time. And so the only other option is direct action. You, you know, this is very, very clear cut. You have a sworn officer on camera admitting that he knew that the items were being removed, which made the action by DFM completely illegal. I mean, and, and barring all of that that was taking place, right, because that, that's, pretty a, that's a pretty horrendous offense in and of itself, right? But towards the south end of uh, Baratania, there was a there's a gentleman who is legitimately homeless. And, well, I don't know. We call it South Africa. But he's he's legitimately houseless, right? I have him on film trying to bend this man's medication. This is medication that this man needs to survive. Now, luckily, before they closed the bin, he made it back down to claim it, and they did give it to him. But what would have happened? And that's not the only time that that's happened. We have documented cases I'm still of, for medication to yeah, of them removing medications. You know, uh, these are medications that, that somebody needs to live and to allow city employees to put somebody's life at risk like that. I mean, that's the most offensive thing at all. And it's all this man could have died without those medications. It's, you know... And they were more than willing to just bin them and give them a notice to try and pick them up in 30 days. What is he sp supposed to do in the next 30 minutes? Well, the, I think the bottom line you is know. that we don't know what, like, I have never been taught, okay, if there's a law that is being broken by someone higher up, you know what I mean? We thought to go to the police. And then so when the police don't enforce the law, I don't know, honestly, I've never been taught what to do. We just, we just take that? Like we're supposed to like, the, if the police don't do anything, then we just like, give exactly. up and go home and just let people, who for some reason the police don't want to arrest, they just get away with crimes. It's just, it's, it's just something that's wrong with that. That's why I don't know what to do. That's why I think, it's a, that's the reason when I saw like, sort of protesting in here, it makes sense. Because this is the place that we should go. Because I don't know where to go. I don't know, you said you mentioned like what, you go to corporation council or whatever. I also don't know how to do that. I don't know where to go. Um, I don't, I don't know what to do. Well, if an officer doesn't do what they're supposed to do, or if you, I, I should say, if you feel that they're not doing what they're supposed to do, yeah. um, you have the right to say, hey, I'm not satisfied. Yeah. I want to go, I, I need numbers for this, for this, for that. Yeah. Because all of us are supposed to know, we're supposed to be able to refer you to like PSO, Internal Affairs, Police Commission, Court Council, okay. and stuff like that. I mean, if you want to go like ACLU, like you were saying, I mean, there's good options. Unfortunately, prior from that incident until you make that notification, there's that time that lapses, that lapses right? Yeah. So you're kind of stuck in the middle going, which way do I go? Yeah. Do I just do this and wait? Yeah. And you know, you want something done now. Unfortunately, if a supervisor does show up and um, their actions aren't, sat you know, aren't satisfactory, there's still one more person to go higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, the more you bring into the picture, I mean, I, I, yeah, I know there'll be emails or something. I don't want to, you know, I can't speak for anyone in particular. Like I said, I wasn't there. Right. I was there for months back. Yeah. Right. Um, but there's always, you can always go up, up the chain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Until, until either you're satisfied or you can say, you know what, I've exhausted all my efforts. I went as far as I could. But then that's stuff that you can document, like you like to do stuff. And that'll help you later on. Unfortunately, like I said, it's later on, but. It'll be resolved eventually. Yeah.
if it's not resolved at that point. Right. So who can I um, talk to that's higher than you? Like, who would you refer me to? Well, the, well the, the, next, the next step up from me would be a sergeant. Yeah. After that, there would be a lieutenant. It, it went, the, the report is going straight to the, uh, the investigators, and internal affairs is aware of it, you know, that they have officers who knowingly watch other city employees break the law. So, you know, I, I've, I've, I've personally spoken to um, Sean Nato. Nato? Nato. And, uh, you, you know, right. So these, these, these concerns have gone straight to the top. And now, like I said, it's, it's just kind of a waiting game. Um, because it's this time, like I said, you know, we've been pretty aggravated with what has been going on and been allowed to go on. But it really has kind of come down to a few people make a report, but then there's no real, the only witnesses are the ones that are accusing, right? So there's no unbiased third party. And so I can, I can almost understand why the other times that, that I've attempted to do this, it's gone nowhere, you know, because you're basically taking one person's word over another. But but this is a whole different ball game. Like I said, we have sworn officers of the law admitting on camera that they knew, in fact, that the raid that took place was illegal. And so I, I can't imagine any more clear-cut solution other than to arrest Trish Morikawa and Wesley Chun for the criminal's that they are, and you know, it, it's on it's on Nova's live stream. It's also on my live stream of when we talk to uh, Sergeant Santos. You, you know, he, this is a sergeant of the law that that said on camera that we were correct, that these items were in fact removed. The only explanation for why Wes and Trish weren't arrested on the spot is that they're city employees and they are uh, they are appointed by the mayor. You know, even, like I said, the one officer when I kept questioning on it because I, I kept repeatedly asking him, "When are you dispatching squad cars to pick up Wes and Trish?" kept saying, well, there's a process to follow because these are high-level high level targets. Well, what difference does it make? What, what difference does it make? Well, none of us are local. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, right. You know, and that's all, that's all we're asking. That's, that's all we're asking is, is a fair application of the law. You know, your, your flag over there says re respect, integrity, and fairness. And that's exactly what we're asking. That's all. Y you know, so it, when that happens, we'll, we'll quietly walk away. Um, but, you know, like I said, I mean, I have every intention of staying until I've been informed that Wes and Trish are, in fact, being arraigned for the crimes. I want my day in court with these people. I want the city to crack down on the criminals that Carlisle appointed. Y you know, and, and I, I don't, I really don't think that that's too much to ask. I don't, because all we're asking is that these people not give special treatment. You know, if, if somebody broke into my home and stole from me, and I said, this is the person that did it, a squad car would be immediately dispatched to have them arrested. But it's, it's very much a clear-cut case of, of, well, these are city officials. And, you know, that's right. They are city officials, which means that they should be held to an even higher standard. And especially when we have collaborating evidence from sworn officers, from video, that shows that, in fact, a crime was committed. And then the stonewall and say, well, we got to go through the investigators. Well, what happened to the first investigation? What happened to the second investigation? They didn't go anywhere. This isn't some out of thin blue air that was brought up today. This has been a repeated pattern of theft, harassment. You know, there's, there's police reports on Wesley Chun 
for assault. I was assaulted by Wesley Chun in the presence of an officer, and that officer's response was to pop open the clip over his handcuffs and tell me that I was uh, interfering in a government operation. After he witnessed Wesley Chun hit me with a chair, that has never been rectified. You know, it's I, I don't know what else to do. It, it seems very much that yeah, we're 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 trying to because I mean this is ridiculous. I'll be the first one to say it that that a group of people have to sit out in front of HPD to get some sort of justice some sort, you know, these are upstanding citizens here, we have collaborating evidence from officers that, as far as I know, are in good standing with the police department, who don't have a, ha have a pattern of, or history of lying, and when you have a sworn officer collaborate what private citizens are saying, and then they still stonewall, and say, well, we have to go through all these channels, you know, what... What channels does the common criminal have, right? If somebody broke into Walmart or a Best Buy or whatever and stole a TV, do you guys go through four or five channels to finally bring them to justice? Of course not. No. You know, it's an immediate arrest, and it's, it's immediately handled. And so it, it very much seems like government employees are given a free pass and given the benefit of the doubt like and given... Like, 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 they have offices. <laughs> 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 Cabinet level members. <laughs> right. They got an office. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wow, a lot of people were chatting. Think it's your connection to uh, blah blah blah. Okay, don't forget. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 OWS Maui says the world is watching. They're making sure that uh, they're publicizing this as much as they can. So solidarity, Maui. Thank you. Uh, Occupy HP. There is no accountability. Very true, there is no accountability for police. Uh, the guy has will BS himself out of any real investigation.
he just he wanted to take a film that I wasn't there, blah, 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 so that he could, you know, get away from us. Crazy people go home. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, you know. another one. It's Your brother uh, looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> had, to, had to look twice. Why? But I seen the shirt you had on last night at school. Why do we care if a uh, Christian was... Not all HPD guys are bad. No, not all HPD guys are bad. That's why we uh, make sure. What we're saying is that they're not bad people, but it's the, it's the actual like system that they have subscribed to that's, that's being. That's gonna, that's gonna trash a lot of things. Sorry, she's trying to set up the tent right now. No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, I <laughs> All we have going on now is we're setting a, a tent inside HPD. Oh my gosh, I thought this was Damien talking to us. No, this is one of the people from my class. One of my classes that is tuned in, uh, Derek, I believe. <laughs> his, uh, his handle on here is, uh, or his, uh, whatever you call it, his name on here is really close to one of our occupiers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> He's one of my class, class members. He, he added me on uh, Facebook last night, and uh, we, we've had a couple uh, small chit chats about what's been going on. And he's actually been watching this. Uh, yes, Dietrich. There we go. Dietrich is his name. <laughs> oh wow! Sorry about that, man. Yeah, yeah. You're really close to one of our uh, occupiers' handles, and. Uh, Trying to run uh, both Facebook and Twitter and the chat line and the uh, Ustream and Amen. yeah, I, I just kind of have to fly through this and just answer you, questions. You should let them know that that courtyard in front of campus is awfully nice for tents, so maybe they should stay on our good side. <laughs> I do love that courtyard, right? It is, it is so it's beautiful. The, the, the fountain, if you look at the, the little statue thing. In the center, it totally looks like the, the uh, logo for Assassin's Creed. <laughs> well, they do have that cannon, you know, right in front of it, right? Right, right outside the gate. <laughs> they have a gate that leads into that, that has yeah, the wall. When I, when I saw <laughs> that, like, that totally looks like the logo for Assassin's Creed. Well, I'm, like, totally, I'm totally digging this campus. I like this campus. It's, it's, it's working out really well. And yeah. the, the team and the class members I have, I'm just loving it. I'm like, oh, I'm so happy that I'm back in the classroom. Yeah. But, yeah. So that's a message. He says that uh, they are on our side. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Where's the what? The, use the bathroom. Uh, you can walk through here. Yeah, we've kind of blocked this off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, as you see, uh, an occupier. So. Setting up a tent inside HVD. <laughs> wow. You know, I've been talking to Feature here for a while, thinking it was, uh, Oh yeah, so Damien was talking to us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not going. So you're not absolutely crazy. I'm not totally gone crazy from eight hours of freaking news streaming. <laughs> he, I was talking to uh, Damien, but uh, yeah, Dietrich uh, kind of jumped in. That's awesome. <laughs> oh jeez. 
What is this? Uh, rise, you are all full of this. Hold the line, big ups. Yeah, that, that's kind of weird. Michael Tata just said, rise, you are all full of it. I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, I think that was I don't, I don't know why he's calling out Rice like that. Rice PDX has been a real big supporter through this whole thing. On the stream, yep. Well, his last thing was on the stream. Yep, he's BS his way out of any responsibility, and it's kind of true. I mean, HPD is doing everything they can to not have any kind of responsibility towards what happened today. And uh, even though we're not making this action directly against them, we are asking that they do their job. And, um, yeah, I mean, so with that, we're, we're asking them to take some responsibility in what's right for the community and the citizens that live within this. So, uh, yeah, Michael Tata, uh, Rise is exactly right. And, uh, you know, you need to uh, make sure you understand what he's trying to get at. I mean, the community and citizens should not have to deal with uh, its police force allowing cabinet members to break the law that harms its citizens and deprives them of the very means of uh, safety and survival. That's a, this is, it should not be allowed in any society. Oh yeah, yeah, we're setting up a tent. We got a couple tents here ready for it. <laughs> Occupy Hilo says aloha, y'all. <laughs> Solidarity to uh, Hilo. Underneath the roll of honor, we have the tent. <laughs> Let's get a nice view. Let's see if we can see the tent underneath the respect and uh, or integrity, respect and and what, what's that last one they try to fairness? That's it. <laughs> That's what they try to tell people. <laughs> oh, look at that view. Look at that view. We have inside HPD. We got. We have the Hawaiian flag, and then we had the flag of HPD saying integrity, respect, and fairness, with a tent inside HPD. <laughs> yes. Now that's something to definitely memorize. Or, uh, a mom momentous occasion. Kodak would be proud of trying to use this, but uh, the occupiers have it first. <laughs> take that picture. I don't know. Take a picture. <laughs> you know they're going to take this out of here, so take a picture. You got to do it with the flags, though, man. Get the flags and all. You might have to have the long, long view because I can barely fit everything in there. I got it. There we go. 
the momentous occasion. And we are past midnight, so we are now day 278 of the encampment at Occupy Honolulu. <laughs> 278 means we pitch a tent inside HPD. <laughs> How many occupiers have done this one? <laughs> Occupy Hilo. He's like, hi Nova, hi guys. Just got home from Lollapalooza. And uh, like an hour ago, looks like you're keeping busy too. <laughs> Yeah, Lollapalooza's in Chicago, isn't it there, uh, Hilo? You're back in our hometown there, huh? So what? I'll put this picture up on our Facebook. Cool. Tag us all. Tag us five in. Yeah, a lot of Palooza. I went to one of them out in Chicago. Did you ever make it to one of them? One of those concerts there? You never seen one of them? No. Ah, oh, they're definitely the bomb. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a good time in Chicago. At least I would think. I don't know if they have it anywhere else. Let's see if we can get a elongated view. I'm sorry, this is sideways, but look at that perfect picture. It's sideways. Yes, I know. I'm sorry, guys. But look at that. The Hawaiian flag on top, stomping down the HPD's flag with an occupier tent right underneath, pushing them right up, telling them uh, where to go. They won't let me. They're they're feeling the they're feeling the pressure on on a uh, above and below Hawaiian Occupy standing together right here in that one little picture. That's a that's a great little deal there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's brazen. <laughs> in Portland, riot cops and horses would be there already. <laughs> oh, don't be fooled. We know. <laughs> we definitely know. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we have our, show, our share of LRADs and uh, military police, FBI, DHS, HPD, uh... Yeah, you name them. We we definitely get them all down on our camp. We got very a lot of pictures of it, but yeah, we definitely know uh, the West Coast is a little bit more severe, and uh, it seems like New York has been pretty pretty much uh, severe, a lot more severe than what we have going on here in Hawaii. Yeah, it sure was. It's uh, uh, Hilo's like, yep, I sure was. Daughter scored me an Occupy Chicago button too. There was a meeting. But I missed it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay, Occupy Chicago. Did you see any of the arrests that, that took place when uh, Occupy Chicago did their Chalkupy in the parking lots and shit around Lollapalooza? <laughs> I saw a bunch of pictures of that come out of uh, Federal Flash's Twitter account. Mm. By the way, just, you know, because um, if you guys are unaware, NATO 5, uh, we saw five political prisoners in jail in solitary confinement uh, in Chicago. We have one additional person who's still in jail for allegedly ta tearing down a uh, NATO sign over a bridge uh, crossing over the river. Um, they need bail money for the last guy, um, 
They're, I think, 30% towards the goal. There's still a little bit to go. Um, in addition to that, what's really important with the NATO 5 is they are in solitary confinement. They need human contact. Writing letters is big. So if you Google uh, NATO 5, N-A-T-O space the number 5, um, you'll find the website through that is connected up to Occupy Chicago. So all the information you need to write stuff, you can send money for the commissary funds, so they can buy book street or uh, snacks, stuff like this to supplement their bologna sandwiches. Um, but they really, really need some contact. If you happen to live in Chicago or know anybody in Chicago, they need visitors. Uh, go on out. If you want to send books, there's instructions on that website on how to be able to send books because uh, they have to be, go through particular publishers and like parents or whatever, some weird bullshit. Um, but these people were bogusly charged. Um, I, I knew many of them from down in the mental health movement. Um, they came in from out of town for the NATO protests, and the people whose house they were staying at, which were organizers that I've known since I started, um, proceeded to get charged on terrorism charges for having a home beer brewing kit. <laughs> um, so it was something that was done. They wouldn't want to go to my house. <laughs> so, no, they, went, they, they did this whole, they did actually many, 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 many raids on four organizers, but these were the only people that uh, they busted through the doors. Everybody else uh, they knocked out the door and be like, oh, you know, we have to get in. And our people already knew not to allow that and to lock the doors and call the lawyers. Um, when they came in on this raid, they didn't just raid these people's apartments. They raided the neighbor's apartments. There's something like five other apartments that got busted into um, and all of it without warrants. Uh, one officer told uh, one of the guys that he would fill in the warrant later um, once they found what they found. Um, so all completely illegal and all bullshit and all part of the PR machine uh, in order to frighten away protesters from coming out and exercising their constitutional rights. Um, these also happen to be a target because <laughs> Shortly before then, uh, as people started trickling into Chicago, uh, CPD pulled over a car, started threatening them, talking about crack and skulls like they did back in 1968, referring to the DNC convention that uh, got started into riots due to police officer misconduct. Um, and it happened to be caught on film because <coughs> somebody started recording it with the phone. And it was a huge, huge black eye to the CPD um, and how things were handling it. It went viral. It was crazy. You can find that um, up online on YouTube. I think if you search out CPD harass protesters or something along those lines, you'll find it. Um, but these are the same people. They targeted that, or they pulled over that car. That car exposed uh, the bullshit. And so, therefore, these people were targeted. Um, in a bullshit raid and now a political prisoner. So they need your help. So write letters, send in commissary money, if you can donate bail money, um, anything like that would be great. And you can do that from anywhere. Cool. Thank you. So we have uh, Michael Todd is going to bed. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see you, dude. <laughs> and uh, Occupy Hilo says, I didn't hear about the uh, Chalkupy or see that, but the rain eviction evacuation was right before the meeting and then uh uh rise uh, pdx is like yeah crazy stuff nato protests yeah yeah it was, it was uh, yeah it was extremely traumatic um i was a medic for that i waited to move here until after that was over so that i could be a medic for that um i was working medical dispatch so I was in a remote location. Um, ironically, I think I would have been better off had I been on the ground treating people primarily because being a medic dispatch, I was also in the same room as the new media center, which was processing all the film and photos of police brutality. 
uh, for the NLG, so we saw those first. Uh, I was in a room with all the live streamers um, and the groups that uh, edit, or not edited, but took care of like rotating out which streams. Uh, we're doing up and we have like three, four, five, six streams going on one time again. So we saw every vantage point, I don't know, social media contacts on the ground, live streamers on the ground, medics on the ground. Uh, so we were getting points. Um, I think we probably, people in that room probably had a bigger picture of every brutal attack that happened, more so than what you do as somebody who's on the ground and you have this very small world. We saw everything. And then once the police started beating the crap out of hundreds of people with their batons um, after peddling them. We, uh, me and uh, one other person ran, you know, went down and went to go rescue people who had concussions out in medical transport. Um, the shit just spewed out of mouths. I ended up getting my fingers slammed into a car door trying to get patients out. That was done by a police officer. It was insane, um, and it was brutal and terrible, and um, if you've heard me talking about fuck the police, I'm in total fucking trauma right now, because as I was leaving work, I had the live stream going up of this at work, and uh, hey, hey, hey man. and uh, set up a tent I had music going for my yeah. co-workers that were also <laughs> doing phone calls and stuff. Yeah, look it, just walk yeah. up there, you'll see it. Huh? I can't see farther than three feet away. That I agree. <laughs> um, so we, uh, uh, shit, I lost my spot. Anyway, it was really, really fucking traumatic. Um, I have flashback stuff all the time. So I was at work. We had music going on from my computer, and I had the live stream going on, so I was kind of watching stuff, and I'd gone up to the bathroom when the assault happened, so I missed that. But just as I was shutting down the computer, I shut off the music and heard Andy talk about uh, his head, in, you know, being slammed into something and having to call an ambulance, and I completely went the fuck out. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> so, fuck the police. That's where I am. It upsets some people. That's where I am. I'm in the middle of fucking trauma flashback bullshit. And because we're taking a stand in the police station, I have to sit here at a fucking police station because I'm in solidarity. And it's the last place on fucking earth I want to be is at a fucking police station. Um, but the movement's important. My brothers and sisters and family are important, and um, I'm going to do what needs to be done, despite my own trauma from the police, because um, it needs to be done, because somebody has to take a stand, and people have to stand up together, because numbers are important. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. Oh. Yeah, look at There's a big focus, too. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? So let's take this momentous occasion. I'm gonna do something. If this disconnects, I will be right back on. But I'm gonna—I have to take a picture of this while I'm doing my use stream here. This is a uh, total craziness. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I was able to get a picture on here and my connection stayed, so cool deal. So if you get another one. <laughs> I'm trying to get a picture of all the view stream. See if I can get the All right, everybody's going. Thanks for coming. 
Oh, jeez. That's cool. I just found out I could take a picture while uh, you streaming. Oh. Uh, don't kill that battery because I'm sure mine's uh, crashing. Dude. I've been doing this for how long now? We need to get that out of here. We don't need that kind of trouble. Yeah. She's gonna take it down in the street. She's down there right now. Why don't we uh, get it out of here? Still hanging in there, man, huh? It's been a long one. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, well, we get two, three hours a day. So. going on the social line. That tent looks so good sitting there inside the police station. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. It's just, it's just funny. Yeah, it's kind of entertaining because it's just weird. Why, why are we letting them do this? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think... I think after I sat down. Yeah. Well, that's a, you know, on the way over here... I didn't grab my cigarettes, I didn't grab anything, and I was like, oh, maybe I should go grab my cigarettes. And the comment that was made was, do you really expect to sit there too long? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, uh, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll be sitting you can't in a smoke cell. while you're in there, so right, right. I'll, I'll be just, sitting uh, in a cell fairly shortly, and then it won't matter anyway. But, uh, you know, um, somebody else made a very good point about why this is being allowed to take place, and I, and I think they're right. We have everything that we need this time around to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that what took place today was illegal. And now... It's a cultural thing. You know. <laughs> well, they really have to play their cards right, because we have mainstream media now who has our side of the story. We have sworn officers of the law who collaborate our story, and so it's really a matter of how do they play it, because if they play it wrong, it's going to be ten times worse for them. There really is only one solution to this, and that is the arrest of Wesley Chun and Trish Morkawa for the criminals that they are. I guess the question is, why should we follow laws when other people get away without law. It's about selective enforcement. <coughs> yeah. Well, we follow the laws because we should have respect for the laws that has been passed down by our representatives. Well, you know, that the citizens was even, uh, you know, asking the rep representatives to have. So we abide by them for that reason. That doesn't mean that they can't get changed or that they can be made better. Right, but, but, but civil disobedience about breaking those laws that are unjust and aren't bring light to that. There's a point to breaking those laws besides just arbitrarily being asked this. Yeah. Or violating somebody else. Yeah, well, you got to be careful not to violate someone else's civil rights by uh, trying to maintain yours. So I think the arrest trish and less time should come down. My question is, should be facing the police station or should be facing the street? Well, I think... Do we have another sign? There's another piece of cardboard over here that says encourage 
Because I think we need to be more defined on who we're asking. Um, but yeah, I see there's only so much room. Yeah. What is that goal? It says truth. Truth. There you go. Hmm. Yeah, it's on the board. It had, it had just a little guy on it with truth. Like, oh, yeah, I can write on that. Make this work. And I've got <laughs> a magnum Sharpie marker. So, facing the street, facing the police department. I think they're kind of a target audience. Yeah. Okay. Not there, uh, I think so. Do me a favor and come like set it up on my door. Putting up photos on Facebook. There is some photos in the section on a Occupy Honolulu's Facebook page. Are. And and maybe maybe that's something that is well known to us but not others. Where people are asking who they are? Yeah, who Wesley Chun and uh, Where where do you see this up? There we go. Okay, uh Wesley Chun is the civil engineer for city and county. He is um a, I believe he has a master's or a doctor degree in engin civil engineering. But uh he's the head of Department of Facility Maintenance, which somehow was given the right to have authority over citizens like they were actually police officers. And like we've asked the police today, how can, the, the, how can street repairmen have more authority and power than the police department does? They really had no answer for that. That's something that the... Uh, City Council decided on when they devised a bill called Bill 54, which is 11 029 city ordinance, city and county ordinance for uh, storing private property on public grounds. So, whatever. Um, they decided that Department of Facility Maintenance, under the director of, uh, or by direction of, or however you want to say that, the director of Wesley Chung. As our civil engineer for the city and county has ultimate power and decision on how the law will be implemented and that his street repairmen have more power or same or more power as the local authorities do at HPD. Then you have um, Trish Morikawa, which is a lawyer and uh, was given a cabinet member, a cabinet level chair as the director for the housing for the houseless in the city and county of Honolulu. And she has been quoted several times as saying that she will help the homeless by putting them in crisis. And that's exactly what she does. She does everything she can to injure and hurt people and deprive them of their, their means to be able to survive. And uh, these, Wesley Chun and Trish Morikawa both today committed uh, several uh, uh, violations of theft and uh, we're asking for both of them to be arrested and uh, HPD is putting up not really a fight but they're putting up a front that they have to go through all these channels that have uh, I guess cabinet level members arrested and we say well no they're still civilians as any other civilian runs up to someone else's home and breaks into their home and steals an item, we're having a problem with them stealing people's homes in general. And the way they went outside of Bill 54, they went outside the law of Bill 54 and performed this action that uh, is just thoroughly illegal. So, anyhow, that's who they are. And uh, so we're sitting here inside HPD, right at where people would uh, go in through the metal detectors and we blocked it off and we've had individuals sitting inside the metal detector. We have a tent inside and out of uh, HPD. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's something you don't hear too much in Occupy, setting the tent up inside the police station. <laughs> so 
the Occupy movement is definitely pushing uh, the envelope here in Honolulu, and uh, we want justice. So, Senator Willis Barrow is on Facebook right now. I'm going to go ahead and contact him and let him know uh, what's going on. But we have tents inside HPD and that we're blocking HPD's entrance in the effort to have Wesley Chun and uh, Trish Morikawa arrested yeah, I, I under theft. Be, uh, I think you need to just point it all out to him. Just put it straight out to him. But, but perhaps, you know, some Senate level inquiries into the way that HPD and DFM are yeah. doing their job. So get, just do it. Just do it. Sure. I, I think that would be a good thing. You know, it's funny because like we discussed earlier here, technology separates people. They, they've become disconnected from each other, but at the same time, we use the same technology to try and reconnect. <laughs> so you watch TV and you get disconnected of what's going on around in the world, but then you're using Facebook to try and reconnect. Technology both has made communication possible and also separated yourself from communication. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Chun or Chun? Chun. C H U N, right? Yes. That's what I thought. But that's the thing. Like we have a lot of people that say we should be going after more people and that we should be more doing more things. But it's I don't believe uh, adding harm to others that are just doing their jobs to allow their own survival and uh, feed their own children and families is going to do anybody any good. We have cabinet level members with doctrine degrees, lawyer degrees, that know better. And, uh, you know, they, they, they feel that trying to be a high school bully didn't work for them since they, I don't know, I think they kind of got beat on when they were probably young, but whatever, who knows. But once they got their degrees, they feel that they have a thriving uh, job by beating and stealing from houseless, you know, people beneath them, like they're not worth anything. As Mayor Carlisle stated that uh, uh, poor people are rats inside Hawaii, and they need to be bulldozed. That's our administration. So, I, I don't think I need to add anything. Uh, hello, I'm currently occupying inside HPD in an effort to have West Chun and Trish Morikawa arrested for theft. We have blocked off the entrance of HPD and set up tents. Any assistance to bring these criminals to justice would be appreciated. We have irrefutable proof of their crimes. Yeah, that's fine. Send my Ustream link. Say if you want to see what's going on. <laughs> uh, Trixie79 says, well, you guys rock. But do you think it's safe to have people inside the metal detector, LOL, just saying? No, we, we actually had an occupier look that up because after sitting in it for three and a half hours, I became a little concerned about the health effects. And apparently it's non-ionized radiation, which means it's not going to do any long-term damage. It's not like the back scatter machines or, or anything of that nature. So it's actually... It's definitely electronic. A magnetic field that's created around you. Yeah. So, so it may have reestablished the way your brain was working while you were sitting in there. Well, <laughs> and it, it, it seemed to do it, wonders it, for another one of our. Yeah, occupiers. this occupier here all of a sudden busted out some lines that was just nonstop. Of, of yeah, this guy, his mind was working great. You know, now I'm not too sure about my brother, but you know, that's that's it. But this guy here, this guy here needs to think about making one of those aluminum hats with a bunch of magnets on it because this guy. This guy's got it going on when he's magnetized. <laughs> okay, so I'm messaging him. Sorry about me. I'm messaging him the link to your Ustream. So we have footage, they came and, um, they did this before, right? They took a bunch of tents that they couldn't prove were not were there for twenty. Yeah, this is the second time of them doing this. And you filmed the first time too? Yep. Oh, this is multiple times. And you have that saved somewhere like where they can't get at it. Say what? I mean that's somewhere we have that saved somewhere where oh, they yeah. can't get at it. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, this is multiple times. This has been going on multiple times. They've been doing all sorts of illegal activities. I mean, you got to remember the one time when they went on the private property, chased the owners down, and got mad at them and made them decide that we were no longer able to be there and took all of our equipment that was being stored there legitimately with permission. Yeah, we have to do that. Oh, yeah. You know? So, I mean, this is several times, and that was actually an HPD action. And uh, Wesley Chun thought he was going to be real nice and offer his support by storing all the materials just like if it was taken under Bill 54, which that means HPD went outside of their own laws on their found property that allowed 45 days and only gave us 30 days. And uh, it, that was a big slew of things. So this is over many, many months of many, many times of different atrocities of breaking laws and violating civil rights just to, you know, clamp down on citizens and make them follow their every whim. And that's why we're here, because we don't do that. We do it if we can't, if it's legal, if it's right for the people, but we're not going to stand for them breaking the law. It needs to be brought to their attention. But I do have to say, to give them credit, I do like how they jump to attention to handle a situation when they, uh, committed assault on Andy. Now we've had worse things happen to us out on the field at our camp and nothing has, nothing happened. But see, for once they got to see how the officers do react to us and right away they were like, whoa, right, they were like, whoa, he was up here in, you know, minutes. I mean, he saw what happened. He was just like, whoa, okay, that's good. And they took care of it and we got to deal with the investigation. Now, I wish they would enforce the same kind of Mindset on. To be fair, when I heard assault, I imagined him getting his head like smashed into the wall. Well, then you got battery. Yeah. <laughs> but but even when he did, even though Andy didn't get pushed as much as I thought, he did have to like get out of the way and. Well, there's there's degrees, and you know he is, as far as I understand, he is going to be prosecuted on a lower level offense. Yeah, of assault. It's because he should, have, he should have arrested you if you were if he thought you were committing a crime, or he should have asked you to get out the way or something. You know, yeah. he definitely went into you. He hit you, right? <laughs> I mean, it he asked me to leave, but it wasn't a valid police command, so I refused. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. Just because you're an officer doesn't mean you know whatever you say goes. Uh, oh, he didn't say so, he didn't say it was against the law. Or anything, did no. Yeah. no, no, we actually having. Uh, basically, uh, they, they're allowing us to do what we're doing. I mean, there's obviously some understanding with some of the officers here. That's why I don't want to direct all attention for all HPD, regardless of what they're standing for or who they're standing up for. You know, uh, there is some officers here that is recognizing that, you know, things aren't right. Things need to be done. So, with that, they're working with us as we need to work with them, and that's what's allowing us to be here the way we are. Because you, you got to admit that, I mean, our movement has definitely been peaceful as all get out. We go out of our way to try and keep it as peaceful as possible, but we do, uh, we infringe and push the envelope when it's needed. Maybe not as far as some of the others, but I don't know. I haven't heard anybody else setting up a tent in HP, you know, in uh, police departments. <laughs> <laughs> that is a challenge to the viewers at home. <laughs> how many? How many? Every police department of America. Yeah, how many police departments is now going to end up with tents popping up in front of and inside? <laughs> that is an interesting concept. I think DHS would just love us even more if that started happening, right? You know, they already have a big problem with us, at least with me, I don't know. Have you guys, have you had DHS approach you yet? Here? I've had independent confirmation that I do in fact have a DHS file. Yeah, that's from Chicago, right? DHS, no. Yeah. Department of Homeland Security, they, they like to stop me and follow me all the time now. Really? Yeah. You know, it's cool. I mean, we're only blocks away from them. I mean, what do you expect? They not me, but I, I've seen them on the what street. What is their... Yeah. Only go find a terrorist. What yeah. is their job supposed to be? Well, they're... they're the Department of Homeland Security... Is part of the Coast Guard. <laughs> well, it was originally created as an effort to coordinate information between the FBI, CIA, and NSA. Right? Because one of the problems that came out in the September 11th report 
was that different departments had bits and pieces of information about an attack coming. But because they were so interested in their own glory and their own investigations, they didn't communicate that information to other departments. Had that happened, we would have had a much... Monsieur Phone, I just had a Facebook message that seems uh, pretty important for me to uh, uh, want to look what, at. What, what happened... No, oh, I'm thinking of going to get my own metal detector now just to be smartened up. <laughs> so I'm laughing. <laughs> Trixie79 says, at Revolution Nova, Rev Revolution Nova. Hell, I'm thinking of going to get my own metal detector just to <laughs> smarten up some. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. See? You're guiding people. <laughs> And so anyway, so one of the things that came out in the September 11th report was that had these departments actually coordinated with each other and spoken to each other, we would have had a lot better idea that the attack was coming. So uh, George Bush created the Department of Homeland Security, and its original intent was to ensure that FBI, NSI, NSA, and CIA... What? Oh. Hmm? Hmm? Okay, I just did it. Okay, I got it. Um, yeah, so their original intent was to ensure that these agencies were actually communicating so that in the event of a, of a, natural, or a natural disaster or a terrorist attack or something like that, we would actually be able to have a better shot at stopping it. But then you have things like the Patriot Act and the expansion of power that Bush used to, uh, to combat terrorism that has created an entire department now that has become a law enforcement department. I mean, they're, they're buying rounds for, uh, you know, ammunition. You know, what, what intelligence gathering department needs live ammunition? None. So they've strayed from their, they've vastly strayed from their original intent of just coordinating information. So do you guys want to take shifts and who stays up or what? No, no. I'm going to go east. Yeah. I'm going to go take a nap. You guys want to like take shifts like... Alright. Alright, you guys. We got some more occupiers that showed up. <laughs> huh? From Occupy DC? Or just DC? Yeah. How many? We had tents set up in here. We brought it down to the street. No. Yeah, why would you do down there? You coming back or? Did you see what's on Willis Earl's page? <laughs> I don't want to know what that is. <laughs> I totally need a pic of me in this with the sign. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to get to my page. It's so weird trying to do it off yours. Okay, uh. That's an iPhone just like you have. I have yeah, because. Yeah, but I'm used to hitting certain buttons and it goes straight to mine, right? But it's not that. i got to actually search for myself as a friend using your phone. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying? You can log me out and log in if you need to. Oh, my gosh. Look at my Ustream. It's, like, loaded. <laughs> or my uh, Facebook. <laughs> oh, my God. The whole conversation's on there. That's great. Yeah, every time you reply, it tweets it out and throws it up on Facebook. <laughs> Which is beneficial because I'm always able to get the correct link when I'm tweeting it. Where did that, does it do the link every time? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. That's awesome. So I always know what video you're on. Cool. Well, someone, yeah, I need to go into mine because I believe that came in, I believe I know who it is, uh, came in and sent me a message. And uh, even though we have differences of opinions about a certain amendment, I do have respect for his cause, even though he's kind of 
pushed out their differences about how he doesn't like us for whatever reason, but I don't see him camping out at HPD. Like no, it's um, it's a group that uh, advocates for the Second Amendment, and I, I like his cause. I like what they stand for, but I don't know. It seems to him that he doesn't like that we're standing up for all the amendments. I guess I don't know. I haven't figured that one out. I don't understand where he's coming from, but you know. You know, the Second Amendment thing really is kind of a difference of opinion between a lot of occupiers. Well, no, he's advocating for. He's definitely advocating for. Yeah. You know, uh, he he's uh, an individual that actually has set the lawsuit against the state about it. And uh, like I said, I have some I have some respect for him. I just wish uh, he would return it the same way. But I need to get on my Facebook because he. Uh, you need me to log you out. Lock, what do you log myself out, brother. Yeah, and log me in. Okay. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. Anything's possible on a capitalist phone. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> is there any more left, or is it all gone now? It's always been. Yeah, the hot meal. Thank you, man. Thank you. But yeah, I have some good respect for this group. Hmm? Okay. Christopher Baker. There we go. No, but if you have, you have funding to cover legal expenses, filing fees, copies, etc., I could probably speak with an attorney who might be interested in representing pro bono. Of course, we would need to look at everything, but it, it is possible if I had to estimate it would say a few. Um, since your issue would rely on a few officers testifying, there would need to be some. Well, we may have just found some help through that group that I was talking about. I think he he definitely is showing uh, uh, some solidarity with what we're doing right now. So that's that's very awesome. That's why I always said uh, I give give him respect. I don't understand, you know, like I said, there's differences, but it, it's, they have a good thing going on. Awesome deal. Okay, what else do I got going on here? It seems like everybody's been trying to get a hold of me this way. Uh, I got your voicemail. We are unstoppable. A better world is possible. We are unstoppable. A better world is possible. Lolani, we uh. We are unstoppable. A better world is possible. We are unstoppable. A better world is possible. We are uh, Lilani says she got my voicemail, and it, but her phone isn't working. But she says you guys are doing awesome. Right on. Thanks, Lilani. Yep. Uh, Dietrich, the guy that I <laughs> I was talking to Damien at first, and then all of a sudden he jumps in, and yeah. <laughs> He's like, I was watching your pineapple video. Wow, trippy. <laughs> I like that. Yes, it is trippy. <laughs> the pineapple glitch. That is an amazing name for a Ustream channel, by the way. Yeah, that, that is great. <laughs> I did 
didn't name mine. I just left it at iZombie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to be able to top the pineapple glitch, and I haven't been here anywhere near long enough to usurp <laughs> the fact that people are always going to go to the pineapple glitch first. So <laughs> I just left it alone. <laughs> it stands on its own merits. Oh my gosh, I got like 43... <laughs> yeah, man. This is what happens yeah. when all you do is live stream all day and you can't Esther? social media. Esther shared her own uh, thing and, okay, cool. That's awesome. Good awesome. going. Uh, yeah, Kia Ina shared a, <laughs> her picture on. <laughs> yeah, Esther Kia Ina, the lady I was telling you about that's running for Congress. Yeah. She wasn't... um. In my district to vote for. And, uh. She wasn't on the ballot. Uh, so. Well, that's because she's in a different district. Right. You know. Right. But I'm sure she loves. The, uh, well, actually, I do know. She loves the support. Here, I'm going to have to restart this, guys. We're infringing on that two hour limit that we weren't sure if it was three or five. So, uh, I'll be right back in just a second. Oh. Okay.